Sorry, folks, running just a little bit late, waiting for Pat to show up. Sometimes he gets stuck during a phone call, so he might jump in here uh, in a minute, I hope. <laughs> I just decided I'm going to start without him. So we want to talk about um, the Federal Reserve today and uh, some of the comments that the Fed chairman, Chairman Powell, made and really go into a little bit of detail on Pat, on what the impact was on rates. So if you see me looking down a lot, I'm trying to see if he's if he's logged in. But today was the day that they had their first round of interest rate um, adjustments in many, many years because of inflation. I was really uh, um, wondering what tools they were going to have in their toolbox because, and he addressed it a little bit today in saying that, uh, you know, the Ukraine is causing uh, upward pressure on inflation. So, you know, what's he going to do about that? And so they are projecting seven rate hikes this year, which by the end of the year would put us at about 1.7% higher. How much of that rolls into the mortgage market really depends on the overall market. One of the other things he projected that they were saying that, uh, they figure that they will have inflation down to, by to 2% by the year 2024. The other interesting comment that he made that I wrote down was he said, volatility in fi financial markets could tighten credit conditions. In other words, all this uncertainty and vol volatility could kind of wreak havoc with our, uh, our credit. And that would not be a good thing, that's for sure. So here we did see... Right now, on average, the rates are about 4.48%. They were 4.4 this morning uh, on a national average. So they really didn't jump up that much, but they did climb up quite a bit this week. And that's, uh, that's a trend that looks like we're going to continue to see. Now, we do have an economist. His name is Roseberg, Rosenberg, and he's out of uh, uh, Toronto, Canada. He made an interesting comment here where he says, it would be wonderful if the Fed was adept at growing food and pumping oil and resurrecting broken supply chains. But the only way the Fed will be able to curb the most cost push inflation we have right now is through a recession. It's going to take demand destruction to get inflation down. I found that a very interesting comment. And the Federal Reserve, based on a lot of the comments that I'm seeing in editorials, is that they're really going to have to pull back on this economy. But he said several times that he felt the economy was strong enough now to handle rate increases. So you're going to continue to see a lot of uh, a lot more articles coming out. Even Roseberg goes on here to say we're going to see have anywhere from a 20 to 30 percent bear market in residential real estate, and that's being charitable. Now he goes out goes out a while, and he said the price to income multiplied just about where it was in 2006. 2007, nobody wanted to believe it then. And talking about housing being in a bubble today, it's as if I told someone that their kid was ugly. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. Not that we want real estate to crash, but if we go down 30%, we've already gone up uh, almost 50%. Um, so how much of a bite is that really going to be? I did see some uh, little different numbers today on the seven day moving average. Um, and it shows that contracts have gone down. Listings have gone slightly up, nothing really major there to report. Uh, we only have 4,300 listings today, which is about a hundred less than last year. Um, we're seeing that home builders, home building confidence sinks nationally as expectations around future home sales worsen. And that's purely on just an affordability uh, um, standing right there. People feel that they can't even afford new construction. The sad part is you go out and buy one now, you're going to be waiting about a year and a half. So that's, uh, that's, a, that's a tough one to do. Um, I did find the Cromford Report does a, you tell me, by the way, you tell me in the comments where you think interest rates are going to go. Where do you think they're going to be at the end of the year? Right now, we're sitting about 4.48. Do you think we're going to go over five? I don't know. March 15th, Cromford Report came out with these numbers today. They do a mid-month uh, look at the numbers and check this out. Sales per square foot, $289.76, up a whopping 4.5% from February. 
Pricing is up 8.2% for the year already. This would be an annualized rate of 39% if this were to continue. Now, obviously, with rates going up, this isn't going to continue. But until we start seeing some more inventory, it looks to me like going into uh, from March to April, we're probably going to see that same clip. You may recall uh, that just based on inventory numbers, I was saying that we were going to see 25 to 3% growth in February and March, and we are blowing that number out of the water, folks. It's really wild. Um, and it's there and it says during February, Maricopa County recorded 13% fewer homes purchased by owner occupiers. So owner occupiers kind of given up, can't find the homes. However, this was balanced by a 24% increase in homes purchased by landlords to become rentals and 20% increase in second homes for flipping, including iBuyer purchases. So it says here, since owner-occupied homes are still, by and large, the largest segment overall sales volume dropped 3% compared to February 2021. So we're seeing some softening in people buying single-family homes to use as a resident, and uh, that's to be expected. Um, nothing cures high prices better than high prices. Now, there's a lot of inflation pressure that's already out there because of supply chain issues and because of a lot of spending and a lot of central bank intervention. Uh, Powell addressed that today, and he still feels it's transitory, but he said it's been sticking a little longer than they anticipated. And uh, as of this morning, the price of oil has gone from a high last week of $125 a barrel to $95. That's a great sign. Let's hope that keeps up. Now, whenever oil barrel prices start going up, um, you immediately see it at the pump. And it seems to take about 10 days to two weeks for it to finally adjust going down. They seem to take their own sweet time doing that. And I think we're going to see some of that uh, this, this next couple of weeks. But $95 a barrel, that should put us below $4 a gallon here. Who would ever thought that we would see that as a, as a bargain? But uh, that's the way it is. I filled up my truck the other day, last week, $102. I wanted to cry. So um, I find it interesting that they say that they're not going to hit their 2% target until 2024. So we're going to be into this inflation for a good two years, and it's going to have a big impact. It's going to have a big impact on people's ability to afford a house if rates go up and wages don't increase then yes, you will see a decline in housing prices. Are we going to see 30 to 40%? You know, everybody's guessing right now. All I can tell you is where we're at today and where we're at today is just aggressive price increases and still a severe shortage in housing. I'm not even going to try and guess where house prices are going to be at the end of next year, but there are plenty of prognosticators that say we're going to be in trouble. And there are plenty of reasons why some of that could come true. Uh, but I can also find you just as many arguments and uh, math and charts that show you that we could be in this housing situation for the foreseeable future. So um, who knows? The Fed went up today 0.25%. They call it basis points, about a quarter of a point. It was already baked in the cake as far as mortgage rates by the time he announced today. We kind of thought rates would dip down a little bit, but they didn't. And Remarkably so, the stock market rallied today. I think they're feeling like, good, you're fi finally going to take some steps to uh, tame inflation because that's not good for the stock market as well. So I hope you find that information helpful. I'm going to drift off a of real estate here for just a second and show you this photo. I have a friend. She lives in Squim, Washington. She's an amateur, amateur photographer. She took this picture of an eagle in a rapid burst and caught it falling off his perch. So I, thought, I just thought I wanted to share that with you. So I... Uh, don't know what happened to Pat. We'll uh, get a hold of him later and find out what's going on. Make sure he didn't get in a car wreck or anything. Until then, everybody have a great day. Take care.